Hey there, folks. It's the frequency from beyond space and time, at the same time, every time. You're listening to Mad Tower Radio. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the intro for the 44th episode of Mad Tower Radio. This next episode coming up, we have decided that we will choose the other host's top and to kick things off right, I would like to reveal my topic for Christian. He will be researching transient luminous events. Wow. Transient luminous events. Can you get a, a breakdown of what the hell that means? Uh, yeah, so it looked so good. It looked like such a good topic that I didn't, I like was watching a video about it, just came up in my YouTube recommended. And it was so good that I was like, this is Christian's topic. And I just stopped watching it. Hmm. So it looks like it could either lean towards um, being weird science or it could lean towards uh, something similar to the real life herd trees. Depends on how much digging you want to do and which road you want to pursue. So I will leave that with you. Transient luminous events. Okay, that's not really what I expected to be given, but I'm excited nonetheless. I think once you see it and start researching it, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna fucking love it. Great. And even if you Thanks. don't, you still have to do it, so it doesn't matter if you like <laughs> it or not. And even if you don't, that <laughs> sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want yours, Ryan? Yeah, lay it on me. I found for you a disgusting little freaker that I want you to report port on and bring back to us the story of the ghost scarecrow of Chiang Rai. What? That sounds badass. The ghost the scarecrow. Can look it up. Of how do you spell Chiang Rai? Right there in the chat. Ugh. It's a uh, north north of um, Thailand, like rural something. Who oh. knows? I'm so excited Ooh, for find that. Out. I'm already that gives me book very your big, ticket. That that gives me very big um it's more scary stories to tell in the dark. Remember, uh, what was it like Harold, the uh, yeah, 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 who stretched that dude's like skin the out? Type of thing that you would bring on any given week. Yeah, something spooky <laughs> <laughs> on any given week. This is this is probably in like a notebook somewhere of things I'm like I should bring up later on. <laughs> I, I thought it fit your vibe. I only looked very uh, shortly into it, but it seems like a winner. I'm I'm stoked for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Mm-hmm. Ryan, what you got for me? All right, Dan. So for you, you know, since uh, you, you're you the one that kind of really got me into cryptids, I decided to go back, back to the basics for a oh, nice baby. little cryptid. That's right. Cryptid hunting. Have you ever heard of the Jersey Devil? I just can't say it. It's not the Jersey Devil. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, for you, I have a creature called the Orange Econ. Now, orange Econ. Yes. And the Orange Econ is a, I, I would just leave it at this, an amphibious humanoid. It, uh, it was sighted in Japan during World War II, so have fun with that. <laughs> well, all right. Oh, no. <laughs> I love a good World War II cryptid. I love a good uh, off-continental United States cryptid. I love uh, amphibians. <laughs> that's right. it. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's good. That was one I was I was excited to do, kind of like with you and Christian. I was like, oh man, you know what? I was like, I was like, this is really cool. When we came up with this idea, I was like, you know what? I'll let Danny have this one because you know how I love like <laughs> anything that's in the water. So I was like, you know what? I'll give this to my boy. Give this to my boy, Dan. I'll, I'll pass off one of the cool ones. Exactly. Like it, you know, it was either that or like real life dust bunnies. So you get the orangey mm-hmm. con, and I'll save real life dust bunnies for uh, another day. Well, folks. The stage has been set, and we'll see you in about uh, three seconds when Christian switches over to the live recording. Welcome back to Mad Tower Radio, where we only broadcast what no one wants to hear. So if you're looking for the men in black outside your window, then you've come to the right place. Enjoy the show. What is going on, guys? This is Dan, Christian, and Ryan coming at you from the present after we've taken some long-needed time to research these topics that we've all uh, selected for each other. And it's also been just a couple weeks since we've talked, 
And uh, as you know, it wouldn't be Mad Tower Radio if we weren't trying to record this podcast while multiple members try to move across the country. Oh, yeah. I guess I guess this week two of us are doing cross-continental moves. Isn't that right? That is right. <laughs> That, that's kind of fucked. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> it's like we're playing fucking Scrabble with states over here, man. Every couple months we just shake it up. Mm-hmm. It's it's like try to keep your friends in your 20s, kids. It's not as uh, easy as it looks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much all downhill in terms of uh, making friends once you graduate high school. But that's okay because my friends brought me a special dossier of horrible monsters and secrets to research today. Yes, that's oh. right. And I think we're going to kick it off with Ryan going first. I'll go second, and then we'll have Christian bring it home. Great. That sounds like a plan, Sam. Okay, so last time you heard from me, not only was I tied up, hogtied, and gagged, but Dan did prescribe me the entity, the ghostly scarecrow of Shang Rai. No. I didn't give you that. Hey, you did. Uh, I gave you that. Yeah, I forgot my little name on the bow. That's crazy. Oh, it was you? <laughs> yeah. By Dan, I Dan is the um is the Taino pronunciation of Christian. So that's why, mm. you know, I, I I got a little confused there. Okay, um, okay. As a native speaker, um <laughs> But uh that being said, it was weeks ago. <laughs> so, Christian, or Dan as we call him on the island, um, gave me the ghostly scarecrow of <laughs> Shang Rai. So I'm just going to give a quick, brief little breakdown of what this... Um, I'm going to just start off with the encounter, what exactly happened. So, in 2005, people living in a small village in rural Thailand claimed to have encountered an unknown entity. Now, this unknown entity was small, not very big, maybe like four feet, Five feet, it was red, had big red eyes, yellowish skin tone. That's that'll be important later. So remember that. Yellow. Um, no arms. I put no arms question mark. Um, had a big head, big ears, and here's the kicker. Like most gnome like creatures, this one could float. So it was spotted flying above like one of the, the farmland fields. <laughs> um, so when I read this and I, I immediately thought, is this some type of alien? Is this some type of ghostly entity? You know, is this um, a Furby brought back to life via dark <laughs> magic and necromancy? So I, I didn't know, and I wanted to jump right on in and find out what exactly this was. So before I get started with, like, into farther on what the entity itself is and what I think it is, because I know what it is, but they don't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um... We're going to talk about where this takes place. So this is the Chiang Rai uh, province. This is 500 miles north of Bangkok. And it, you know, it, it took place like there's in these more rural areas. They're populated with these very small to medium farming village. So let's do a little quick breakdown of the actual events that led up to it. All right. So one day in the morning, one of the villagers is biking home or he's biking somewhere. And he looks out into one of the fields and he sees this thing. At first, it's kind of low, so he's like, oh, could this be a person, like, like in, the, in the tall grass? Then it floats up into the air above the, um, you know, the crops, and he starts freaking out. And Thailand, you know, uh, they're very, they have a very rich, like, urban legend and folklore culture. So you can tell already, he's kind of freaked out, because there's so many, when I was looking up, like, the folklore of Thailand, there are some really freaky entities and spirits that they have there. So immediately this guy freaks out, so he heads home. A couple hours later, he runs into his buddies, and he says, guys, I saw this thing out in the fields. And his seven friends go, really? And they go just dogpiling out there. <laughs> For real? Yeah. <laughs> and so they go, and, you know, they go, and they want to look and see what it is. And so they see this thing as well. One guy said that it was spine chilling for him when he looked at it and it looked back at him and started nodding its head and just like like oh, it was trying to Jesus. communicate with him. Oh, God. And then, <laughs> and then later on that, like, I think it was later on, like, toward the nighttime, more people come to see it. This woman sees it. And then, towards the ending of the day, it looks like it seems to stretch out and Ooh. then disappear, shooting like a rocket back into the sky. 
So that is the incident kind of play by play. So it kind of took place over the span of a day. Um, with the kind of more important thing that not just one person saw it, multiple people saw it at different times throughout the day. So he just was vibing around over this, this area. So my immediate thought was, you know, could it be, you know, uh, you know, like an alien? Do people think it's an alien? And, and they did. And so that kind of coincides with um, a villager had actually said the day before, the day prior, that at nighttime they had seen fire falling from the sky close to the area where the entity was spotted. Of course. So exactly. So it's like so people were like, okay, well, there's not like, no, like there's not really like weather balloons here, like there is in like the United States, or we can just explain it away. You know, people were like, could it be a lantern? Could it have been? Well, they're like, no, it was a huge ball of fire that crashed down into this area. It's the thunder. So people bro. meet, it, dang, from predators or oh, no, from predators from prey. So um, you know, people thought extraterrestrial. They're like that fiery ball that they saw hitting the earth. It must have been like an escape pod. It must have been like a spaceship crashing onto Earth. And this has to be one of the dudes piloting it. You know, I, I, in my mind, I was like, maybe that's why his arms are gone. They got stuck on the steering wheel and he got launched out the, you know, the windshield without his arms. Um, <laughs> so a lot of people thought that. And I feel like people like to think those things because they're fun. Um... Then, of course, some guy comes out a couple days later. Well, not a couple days later. I think it was, a couple, I think it was like months to a couple years later. And he's like, I actually had a helium, uh, was it helium? Yeah, a helium balloon. He's like, I had a helium <laughs> balloon slash doll that matches that description exactly. And I released it, uh, you know, and it kind of got away from me. And then a storm hit. And um, it, it took it far away. And I, I was able to recover it. But it looked like it was going in the direction of this this farming village look bro i just happened to release my ufo shaped helium <laughs> balloon on the day that you saw a ufo all right so just calm down you little yeah. conspiracy Ske theorist. skeptoid exactly skeptoid from XCOM one and two the skeptoid um Skeptoids now it's funny be because like. <laughs> um so he was like i and so people said so why did it take you so long to come out and say this you know you let these people revel in this kind of delusion of grandeur this like this fantasy that they had seen an alien. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, it, it really exploded in that area in terms of, like, so many, like, like hundreds more people than their infrastructure was used to were visiting, were visiting this, this town and these streets. Like, the roads were getting destroyed <laughs> because hundreds of people kept pulling up and just, I gotta see, to it, see it, literally. Yeah. And, like, it's like, and a, and, uh, it's like that family that said that their kid got, like, trapped in a, oh in a my balloon. God. I remember and he was that. just up he was in like, the air for like three days. They went crazy, yeah. And they mobilized like millions of dollars in resources to help this runaway kid in a helium balloon. And the family was just lying. Yeah, he was like in their attic or something like that. Yeah, he was just there the whole time. Thank God. Wait, there wasn't a kid no, in there? Was, no, no they, he was at home. It, it was a lie. The whole I, thing was a hoax. I never knew no, that. Yeah, it was fake. That's the bullshit. family just did it for publicity. And they're like, our oh, son. Like, like, and they're like, we're so happy yeah, we found him. They should him. be tied to a balloon. They, That's they, what I thought. They got set to I'm the pretty sky. sure that it was like the kid said something because he was like a stupid little kid. He's like, oh, yeah, I was just upstairs. <laughs> yeah, they should be given a sky burial for that. Not even. They should stick them in the balloon and then do what I thought they should have done in the initial when they thought the kid was in the balloon and open up with our artillery, our airborne <laughs> they artillery. They should actually blow. shoot it down exactly. for flying over <laughs> Flying over United U.S. Space, airspace, airspace. I actually. Yeah. You didn't know that was fake. No, I I just thought like the either the gas like trickled out enough so we could get brought down safely, or just like ended in an unspectacular way. The balloon boy hoax. Uh, but yeah, so that's what this guy thought. He was about to throw on this um the water. He was trying to throw on this fire that is the ghostly scarecrow of Chiang Rai. So here's the thing. Eventually, um, a journalist hunted this guy down and killed him. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, a journalist hunted this guy down, Ooh. and they said, well, I want a picture of this so-called balloon. You said that you have it, right? He's like, yeah. He's like, well, let me see a picture of it. Because apparently it was his favorite balloon, his favorite doll, his helium doll. So that makes me wonder what the doll was, if it was his favorite helium doll, air quotes. So um, they said, I want to I see what it looks like. And so apparently this journalist got a picture of this balloon, and it looked nothing 
<laughs> Absolutely nothing. Oh, like this we're ghost and holes in your Teflon story, mm. you piece of shit. Yep. You know this this one had arms, and uh, it wasn't yellow with red eyes. <laughs> Um, and it sure as hell, because here's the one thing people were saying too, like, okay, great, you lost your balloon. There's no way it's going to maintain that much helium over that far of a distance in a storm and go floating there and just stand there in the same exact spot floating for hours. So, of course, you know, they, this guy's been outed as a liar, so they burned him to death. In the same field. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. <laughs> they, they put him in a balloon and sent it off into the air. <laughs> and they had, their, they had their Air Force blow it out of the sky. So that comes back to, you know, people still don't know what this could have been. So I, being the little sleuth that I am, I almost said being the little slut that I am, uh, <laughs> I went online <laughs> and um, I looked up, I, I really wanted to find out what people could have mistaken this for. Because it's like, you know, like on the border of the, of the United States and Mexico and like in Mexico, sometimes in Puerto Rico, things get misidentified when there is something already there that's like folklore. And, uh, you know, for a good example is the, you know, el chupacabra, you know, people will always say, I saw chupacabra, I saw him. And it's like, uh, like uh, and it was like, you know, like a dog with mange or something, something that like, damn, like, damn, lechuza, bro. There's the whistling I man with that. his dad's guts in his bag. I mm -hmm. um, hate lechuza, bro. Dude, la lechuga, the lettuce man. No, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> El hombre de lechuga, bro. <laughs> but, but I get what you're saying. Like, if, if there's a powerful story... Yes. Or, like, the culture is there to fill in the, the question marks, it, that's, it's what they're going to go to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and I think that, the, I think that was an actual... It, like incident or event where someone's like I caught the chupacabra and it was a dog that had mange so it was something that was out of the ordinary because it was a dog with no fur but it wasn't this you know this, this cryptid so I went and I started looking at like folklore in Thailand specifically in the northern parts of Thailand they have these horrifying ghosts that you would probably fight in like Neo 2 they have them shooting out of their ears there are just so many of them <laughs> <laughs> and one of them is like a woman's head with entrails hanging out the neck stump and it goes and strangles you tell me that's not a Dark Souls enemy tell me that's not a Dark Souls enemy that sounds like a like a Bloodborne monster <laughs> but um, you know th those are not there was nothing I could find that was specific to the northern area there was some things that like sounded like a little kind of almost sea imp towards the southern beach areas of Thailand but nothing in the north so I kept looking, and there was this um, this entity. Some call it a deity, called Kuman Thong, and um, okay. it's linked to ancient Buddhism. Modern day Buddhism does not really, you know, like in oblivion they say, "Well, we don't talk about that." And they're talking about a certain form of magic. I'm have well, that's to stop because you right there, because I watched <laughs> Incantation, and that was about an ancient Buddhist deity, and uh, that movie. And what was, was his name? Uh, fucking awful okay well this one's better because it's real Th that uh, one was no, too? But, no it's not true Son Goku is not a Son Goku is a real dog <laughs> <laughs> so um so so I'm gonna read real quick what it is and this is just like from the Wikipedia the veneration of Kuan Thong is not part of mainstream Buddhism practices but it is popular specifically in Thailand now the reason why people don't modern day buddhism does not really associate with this is because the authentic kuman thong originated in a practice of necromancy oh nice so essentially what it was is they would these necromancers or these monks we don't really know what to call them um they would obtain the de the uh, desiccated fetuses of children who had died in the womb so stillborn fetuses and they would kind of dress them up and put them in these like charms almost and what this was for was like it would like bring you good luck it would help you throughout life it was almost like your own personal god like, that you would kind of have with it like everything. a lucky rabbit's foot kind of but it's a human fetus yeah like a yeah. little like a uh, little, <laughs> like a like a blessed fetus yes fetus. essentially put it on your keychain mm -hmm. put it on your keyring 
Exactly. I hate that. Now here's the thing. Sometimes in the olden days, people would say that these entities would come to life or they would kind of get like this physical form or a form not of just this little like kind of trinket. And it would look like two little boys or two children whose skin was golden or yellow. Mm. Okay. So what I thought is that whatever this entity was misidentified for, I'm not sure how big that Buddhist practice is in that area of Thailand, you know, in Chiang Rai. I don't, you know, I don't, I, I'm not going to claim to know enough about the region to say those things. But I thought it was interesting that, that there was a cultural deity, god, entity, whatever you, you know, whatever you may call right, it. Right, right. That yeah. had, like, something similar that someone may have been like, oh, that's what that is. Or, you know, I, I kind of thought, to, I just thought it was interesting because... Instead of going to that, they went right to an alien. But I'm sure there were people there who was like, oh, that could have been that. It could have been, a, you know, it, it could have been this, you know, Kuman Thong. I just thought it was really interesting that there was something there, kind of like what I was going back to saying, was like, there was already something within their culture, within that region, that kind of checked off some of those boxes of being supernatural in the way that it looked and its origin, that people may have been more susceptible to saying, oh, this is something totally out of the ordinary. It reminds me of Kuman Thong. So that's, you know, the, that's about as um, as far as that goes. There haven't been any more sightings of it. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it was so popular that this town was like to being like totally overrun by like paranormal investigators or people who just wanted to come see if they can get a shot of it. It was so like overwhelming for them that they installed like a camera to monitor that field so that in case in case it oh. did show up, they're like, here it is. You don't have to show up anymore. We have it on camera. Um, but it kind of became like a little like local, you know, like celebrity. Man, um, that's that's yeah. just my biggest fear of like entertaining in this field, you know, is like how do we tread that very fine line that makes us those guys, you know? Yeah. Like the – like. The, the dudes that just show up and are just super disrespectful and just, like, just super obnoxious. And, I mean, yeah, it's easy to go out and just not be a obnoxious, disrespectful asshole. But even, like, even to them, like, from their perspective, it's like, am I doing something that's making me look like that way? Am I doing something to, like, bother these people, you know? Yeah. Because I, I, mean, I want to be there, and I want to be, I want to see it, and I want to record it, and I want to check things out. But it's like I, I don't want to bother anybody. I think a big thing that goes with that, and like, is that a lot of these, and it, you know, it's popular now because it's so easy to be like, air quotes, a paranormal investigator. Because anybody can get a phone, anybody can get some, you know, stuff, sure. and they can go somewhere. I think what separates people, like the people that we want to be, from those guys, is respect, like respect for the culture respect for the people that are there you know like for example like if we you know we get really big and we're able to go out on these like big expeditions and we go like let's just say to japan for like a ghost hunt or a cryptid thing it's taking that extra step of saying well what is culturally acceptable in this area well i think what would Am be culturally too loud? acceptable in that um Oh, yeah, no, no, I'm just saying, like, the, the, that's what separates, because there are those people where this go and they say, we're pulling up with our big lights and our loud tractors and our loud trucks, <laughs> and we're going to just investigate this, and all Taking the... Taking pictures of everything. Exactly. And our gigantic 100K exactly. lumen UV laser. Exactly. It's like, we're hunting ghosts now, and then you peel the paint off the walls with your <laughs> flashlight, because it's so strong. I think there's a ghost like, in the walls, like and just start smashing <laughs> it with a hammer. <laughs> But that's what, you know, but that's, you know, a, but like that's kind of what going in and being loud is yeah, like equivalent to that's the ghost hunter places. I'm trying to be, you know? I mean, you said uh, you said earlier about, like, Japan. Obviously, if we're in Japan, I'm going to start, you know, knocking over gravestones and just, like, yeah. just being really, really offensive and culturally insensitive because that will yield us the best results in as far as antagonizing the ghost. You literally sound like, who was it? There was a YouTube video where I was watching where a guy's reasoning, he got kicked out of an, it, it was in the States though, but he got kicked out of a spot because he was like, I wanted to be as disrespectful as I could because I felt that there was an evil entity there. So I knew that I just had to be up in its face. And, da, 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 da. and like, he just got like, yeah, the evil entity was him and he got arrested. Like, that was... 
Then we had to call the local municipality to exercise him from the graveyard. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally, that's exactly what it was. I was like, this guy's a freaking, this guy's a freaking jabroni. No, I you know mean, and it just ruins it. <laughs> and it just ruins it for future investigators, future people who want to yeah. come and check mm-hmm. it out. Because eventually, like, there's this one graveyard that's, like, really close to us that's, like, su- known known everywhere in the area as, like, a really big hotspot. But you can't go because so many people have gone there and fucked around that, um... Been assholes, it, it's just yeah. super patrolled now. It's just super patrolled now. Like once a night, I'm sure that the cops are out there checking it out. You know? Oh, for sure. They have to when people are like that stupid about it. And I'm not saying that, you know, what we want to do is sometimes might not always be on the on the uh, <laughs> on the legal side. Uh, soci- on the legal on the societal right normally, side of normal side. But like you can Without being disrespectful, without causing a big ruckus, <laughs> and you can you can just to take some pictures and try and gather some data and everything without uh, getting caught and ruining it for everyone else. Stop being subtle, you know, leaving as small an imprint as possible, uh, or uh, as uh, small a footprint as possible, you yeah. know. Doing those things and not, like you're saying, ruining it for everyone else. I mean, when we did the ghost hunt, I think the only thing that we didn't pick up was uh, the salt. But oh, We did leave the salt, that is true. But I, I didn't know exactly how we were going to get all that back into the bag. You gotta bring a little hoover, as we call them. <laughs> you gotta bring a little shop back. Now, Ryan, I really, uh, that was really awesome, all the effort you went through back there, too turn one of those Thank one-off you. sightings you know into into oh, a whole topic, topic. Yeah. it's actually pretty cool um Thank unfortunately you. i did not do the same thing um <laughs> mine was also a one-off topic you know and uh, i got i i just i just couldn't find much that's pretty much all there is to it i couldn't find much on the orang econ but let me get back let me let me sometimes. just dive into my topic right here so the Balloon Boy hoax happened on October 15th, 2009. <laughs> um, it, it happened around the Fort Collins, Colorado area. No, I'm just fucking with you. But I, I am... I do have a tab open about the Balloon Boy hoax. So I was getting into it. Fuck. you like on the fly, just completely I was like, hold off. on, let's talk about Balloon Boy for a second. <laughs> he's, he's my favorite cryptid. <laughs> <laughs> but for my real topic... Ryan assigned me the Orang Ikan. It is a tale of one of those one-off cryptids, but it is fairly interesting. So, I'm going to put on my best uh, my best fan fiction reader's theater voice and uh, give it to you straight. During World War II, a Japanese surveillance team stationed on the picturesque Ki or K Islands of Indonesia reported coming across strange mer-beings, described as being around 150 centimeters tall. Uh, The heads were adorned with prominent spines, and the faces were somewhat human-like in appearance. Baffled soldiers sometimes encountered these curious beasts frolicking and splashing about in the water, as well as occasionally even coming up on beaches. The native population of the islands knew these creatures and called them the Orang Ikan, or, literal translation, man-fish. The sergeant of the team, Taro Haribe, was invited to come look at the dead body of one such creature at the village chief's house. The perplexed sergeant described the dead creature as being around 160 centimeters long, with red-brown shoulder-length hair and spines along the neck. The face was said to have a mix of human and ape-like features, such as a low, broad nose and prominent brow. The lipless mouth was wide, like that of a fish, filled with tiny, needle-like teeth. The creature's fingers and toes were long and webbed. Haribe was deeply affected by what he had seen, and actively sought zoologists from his own country to investigate upon his return. Ultimately, he was unsuccessful in finding anyone willing to do so, and as such it is like unlikely that we will ever know what the Orang Ikan truly was. So, I mean, it's a tale as old as time, right? There's, there's hundreds upon hundreds of these one-off sightings coming from soldiers you know yeah like uh there's there's tons from vietnam there's ones from vietnam about giant fucking spiders there's yeah we talked about that 
long time ago. There's uh, there's the rock apes in Vietnam as well. Um, Christian brought that one really fucked up one about the uh, Mananangal. Sure, sure. The like, it, it sounded similar to what Ryan was just talking about. It's like a, a half woman whose guts are falling out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, did did Ryan talk about the the giant in the cave in Afghanistan yeah, or something? Yeah, he did the giant talk about of, the giant um, of Kandahar. The Kandahar, that's what it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's this. Um, what was the one that you brought, Christian? Saddam Stargate. Sure, war war makes people a little sci-fi. Yeah, uh, <laughs> what else can you say other than war is hell? What's it called? Uh, I know that. What was I think it was? I think it was during World War Two. I know that uh, there was something like in like the Navy had seen. They were like going through like just like wherever that wherever they were being deployed. I think it was Marines that saw it. And they saw like a bunch of faces in the water, like 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 like, like ethereal faces. So like, yeah, man, war got you out there. Yeah, those dudes ate nothing but spam for nine weeks. They just didn't have any sodium. Dude, I mean, <laughs> it's hallucin- it's hallucinating. I mean, it's weird. It, it, it's weird that like I listened to another podcast, um, expanded perspectives, Whoa. and in many ways they are the inspiration for this podcast. But they they read a lot of viewer stories, and. Oh, like I don't want to say an overwhelming majority, but a fuck ton of the viewer stories they read come from like fucking uh come from soldiers, sailors, airmen, you know, all mm. all the dudes, you know, like deployment stories. There's deploy. There's for for every deployment story, there's a story that was like not deployment as well. And I mean, okay. if I guess the fastest way to spend a lot of time in the woods alone as an adult in today's world is to join the military because all they're going to do is stick you in the woods alone, you know? (laughs) So like, I don't know. You you put, you put, you put young impressionable people in these weird situations they've never been in before, you know, maybe they're going to see something. Yeah. Maybe they're going to fight a boar. (laughs) (laughs) I did get charged by a boar. It wasn't a boar man, but I did get charged by a boar. But, you know, who knows? If you were a little more impressionable, you could have came home that day and been like, I found the Yo, fucking I boar saw, man, I, and he tried I to saw the minnow, me. the minnow boar. The minnow boar. <laughs> the serpent part. But, I mean, that's a tale as old as time, you know. What I do want to talk about before we uh, uh, hit shuffle is these... Uh, these Orang Ikan. They have a very, very strange um, description as opposed to like most other mer creatures that um, come on this show, you know? They have like ape like features, but also fish features. And uh, I, what I think is personally pretty gross is these spines. I don't know about uh-huh. you guys, but. When I'm the guy who doesn't touch the fish when we go fishing, because <laughs> oh, you don't like the the bone. I don't. I no, I don't like it. You know, it's a little. It's a little. <laughs> is like, <laughs> is the um, the play here like trying to allude that maybe it's like like an evolutionary thing, like a mammalish thing that went back to the water, like a maybe, whale? and. uh in the times that we've talked about mermaids on the show before, um, we've looked at it from that angle. Sorry, my wife just put a mm-hmm. Dairy Queen blizzard on my desk. Blizzard? Yeah, I couldn't resist taking a bite. But, what were we saying? <laughs> I heard like the wet <laughs> lip slapping of a satisfied blizzard bite. What was going on? You're talking about the spines and how uh, they, how they, um, were they something oh, like yeah, evolutionary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fish are gross. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> and no, I don't like the spikes, bro. I don't like the spikes. Who? I'm trying to think of that that fish that has spikes. Um, the swordfish. Oh, it's like a all spike. Oh, it's uh, this guy from Murlocs from <laughs> Wow. They're kind of spiky. Little oh, spiky guys. Yeah, I guess that's probably uh, the exact description that this was giving. It's essentially a murloc. Little freak. Speaking of uh, little freaks, let's get the fuck away from this topic. This is awful. 
<laughs> Bruh, Christian, get us out of here. Yeah, let's take a little ejection. So, we, we spent a little time um, theorizing, some time uh, trying to come up with explanations. So now we're going to ground it very firmly in the science category. This is mm. going to be like a, a 25-minute physics class if I'm y'all excited. are into that. So you didn't find mm-hmm. anything that ain't no conspiracies, nothing special, nothing crazy? I looked very long and hard, but it's it's just science, just good old-fashioned okay. uh, recordable phenomenon that freaks Send people it. out. Let's hear it. So I was gifted by you the transient luminous events for this week. Mm-hmm. Also, sorry, uh, sorry you had to play science fair. I thought for sure you'd be able to find something. Well, I mean, even if it is science fair, it's it's got some pretty, pretty tantalizing bits. So the first thing I'm going to do for you is throw you some pictures. So just take a look at these. And imagine you're just looking up at the sky one day. You You've seen, like, weather before. You've seen a cloud. You know what the sky looks like mm-hmm. at night. And then all of a sudden, for like two seconds or so, you come across something like this. Yeah, that's like, that looks like swords looks of revealing cool, so. light. Wow. Or, for example, let me get you one more. It starts to get a little um, end of Evangelion here. Look at that one. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's the third impact right there. That looks so cool. So these uh, transient luminous events have been um, just recently uh, been able to be recordable. I think it was like 1989 because it's a very quick flash of low intensity um, plasma shooting up into the sky. And it makes these super freaky looking effects go out. Yeah. So when I decided to pass this off to you. The farthest I got in it was the finding out that these phenomena have names. They do have really silly names, <laughs> and that's, that's the tricky part to it. So right now you're looking at, I believe they're called, like, carrots sometimes. Like, you know, little carrots and little stalks. I'm going to send you the whole grid right now. Some of them are called elves and ogres and that's like, that's why i was like yo i need to pass this off to christian because i saw that it was called a transient luminous event and then when i went to go google that just straight up transient luminous event the suggested to next to it were elves and sprites and i'm like oh there's got to be something wacky it just seems like nasa had a little bit of fun naming mm. these guys <laughs> bastards like, like you can you can see there on the uh, third picture, the elf is like just just a big ring in the sky. Nothing too crazy. No no reason to give it that name. Yeah, that's a little fucked up. Why would you want to call it that? Or, or like smaller ones. You know, sometimes they go by gnomes. Here you can see one from space right here. Oh, you can see from that high up. That's really cool. Yep. It's, yeah. it's super high up in the uh, atmosphere. Yeah, I was gonna say, aren't they like? They're like super high up on that on that uh, graph that you sent. The little graph you can see down at the bottom. It's got little thunderstorms. Oh wow! Yes. So, that's, so what? If you're gonna get to it, my apologies, but like, what causes no, these no, plasma this, discharges? This is the best uh, transition I could have ever asked for. Oh. So, <laughs> first thing, I don't know shit about shit about the weather, mm-hmm. <laughs> but. What appears to be the cause of this phenomenon is uh, a thunderstorm ends up shooting plasma, you know, down to Earth when a uh, static discharge happens. That's, you know, the lightning we know and love. Mm-hmm. But it also, on rare occasions, when the, uh, the environment is correct and the mesosphere's, like, got a higher electric current, maybe, it also creates plasma jets that shoot straight up like you can see the blue jet on that thunderstorm yeah is, mm-hmm. it just it's just lightning up instead of lightning down oh, really 
and sometimes as it gets higher up and the atmosphere is starting to act differently the farther you get away from the earth it causes the plasma to react in these really silly and kind of scary ways hmm that's sick so is it pretty much the that same thing that's hap- like same thing that causes the northern lights hold up let's let's take a look here is the aurora borealis a tle it's actually a coral mass ejection a coronal mass ejection my apologies it's from a sunburst it's like the sun's wave smashing into the atmosphere okay i probably should have came in it with that knowledge but you know we're, we're flying i also spent a lot of time because it's all plasma based i had to like go and find out what the fuck is plasma what does that mean it's blood yeah. Can, can y'all tell me what plasma uh, is? Plasma. The is closest thing I can tell you is uh, liquid fire. <laughs> liquid fire. Okay, okay. We can, we can work with that definition. So what I found was it's just um, any gas or certain gases that uh, get superheated and supercharged and can um, sort of rip out all of the electrons out of their molecules and then they can conduct an electric current oh that's badass so like if 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 a gas gets heated enough that the electrons come off and a current can run through it it becomes like this weird plasma and fire is a plasma you know sun the sun's a big old plasma ball lightning um neon yeah it's like uh it's like an explosion trapped in time right I don't know what the hell that means. That sounds like a like a J.K. Rowling <laughs> that sounds, definition. I don't know what the hell that means. Something like that. But they make some sick, sick effects. This is one of my favorites I found. It looks like a wormhole being ripped from the sky. And like aliens coming down. That's all. That's the little, uh, the scarecrows, That's bro. Awful. That's the scarecrows out there. If I see that outside, I'm going inside and ending it. Yeah. These things are horrifying, but they only happen for like two <laughs> seconds for or something. For two seconds, you get a glimpse of the end. You just see like Moog's blood fingers come down and shatter the earth for like a half a second. Not Moog. That's got to be awful. Certified Moog moment. The, the Lord of Blood, yeah, y'all know him. And these are described on average as uh, 40 times stronger than an electric bolt. Ooh. Wait, wait. So are these two scale? If I went up there and was standing next to it, it would really be that fucking big. Oh, these are huge. Let me see if I can find my favorite one. It's one that you can see from an airplane. Like someone's flying around and they... Oh, here it is. That looks like the angels no in Dark Souls 3. Like the tree. <laughs> That's so cool. What? You see like this hell thing like tendrilling out from like a comet blast or something. They look super sick. That's awful. And I, I wanted so hard for something horrifying to happen from them, but it's just like some crazy atmospheric phenomenon. Really? Uh, the, the only thing that I found that was a little weird was there. once we started developing the right amount of, or the right power uh, in recording and camera equipment where you could actually take photos of these damn things because they're pretty uh, mm-hmm. faint. Like, if you went outside and took a photo, you'd, you'd probably have a harder time. You need to have, like, the right electro... What the fuck ever. I think I read that these things were so hard to capture that, like, mm-hmm. the scientific community were like, yeah, that's probably exactly what's happening. We just haven't caught it on camera yet. Yeah, it, it was a interesting... Um moment where like the theory had already understood it it's just we couldn't really capture it i thought that was interesting like by the there was a really interesting article from the 20s where this dude was like going into detail about how these form and he knows this happens from observing lightning below and that something must also go up but he couldn't yeah until technology caught up to Hmm. him and now he's dead well he is dead yeah he wrote it in the 20s i mean you gotta you gotta go back (laughs) all the way to the beginning of like recorded history and just wonder how many like creation myths and religious texts and events and anything was affected by these came out of this yeah how many fucked up things they saw in the sky how many myths and legends were were just a transient luminous event that somebody happened to see well 
It's like you're looking at my notes right now because that perfectly moves into the next part. Uh, there is a fairly frequently observed phenomenon called St. Elmo's Fire. Have you heard of this? No. no. It's also called, or it's also the name of a really bad movie. So don't don't Google St. Elmo's Fire like expecting immediately to find what I'm talking about. It's, it's <laughs> okay. a shitty film. So St. Elmo is the Catholic patron saint of sailors and uh, abdominal pain. So sailors and stomach oh. aches. <laughs> and this effect, this transient luminous event, can happen in miniature when there's a high electromagnetic um, intensity down here on Earth. Okay. And it frequently happens that when old like sailing ships are going out into a thunderstorm, there can be this plasma discharge from the top of their masts into the sky, and it looks like a like a burning torch, sort of like these pictures here. That's really cool. Huh. What? And it was called Saint Elmo's Fire. Like a lot of sailors saw it as oh, like a blessing cool as from the saint. That like they're being watched over. Like the the globe, the light globe of like heaven is over their ship. When in actuality, it means you're in a really, really bad thunderstorm. <laughs> Dang, dude. Like it a, means a you're a bad storm is coming. <laughs> and there's, like, observations of this effect happening in uh, ship myths all across the world. There's a very um, well-documented 1400 sailor from China who always uh, came across St. Elmo's Fire. Yeah. And was like, yeah, that just means we're good to go. This is a sign from the gods that sailing is going. <laughs> this is a sign. St. Elmo also, said we're good to go, boys. Dies of scurvy. It now, in a modern context, happens with airplanes. So uh, at the front of the cockpit, particularly, you can get this effect. Oh. Take a look at this. Oh. The plasma like jet can come out of the side of the airplane and just like what? light up the the way in front of them because they're flying through these high electrically charged. They're flying areas. through the your fuck zone. I mean, it's it's not really that damaging anymore. Like most modern planes can take a lightning bolt. Like, right, like they're right, built right. and ready for that. But it, it's fucking uh, scary. Yeah, that is fucking scary. I would never want to fly again after that happened. Like you look out your window and it looks like you're you're flying around the uh, circumference of one of those Tesla balls. <laughs> now, do you think um, do you think this was just an urban legend, like back in like the early days of flying before we knew about these things, fifties, sixties, seventies, maybe? The people like didn't understand. Where pilots what was going just on. like, yeah, don't worry about the zappy windshield. <laughs> just, just just move right past it. I I wonder if. It maybe didn't happen in the early um, history of flight because uh, ships, or not ships, airplanes they weren't, weren't as big and as like, comfortable high, yeah. flying through. I guess mm -hmm. so. But if you look at some of these uh, pictures, and there's artist renditions as well of the St. Elmo's fire on ships, it looks pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Out. I'm, I'm looking at those right now. It looks insane. It looks haunting. These, actually. like, ghost ships. That's really cool. It's super cool. Not, and it only just it just blink in for like like a second or two. Yep the the electric discharge would shoot off and you're you're good to go. I mean, depending on the intensity of the storm and like what's going on. Man, this is really really cool. I I thought you were gonna say man. This sucks. <laughs> when we don't know things, when we don't understand. No, I mean, things. I do want to say that I am like heartbroken and just disappointed that like where's there's no where's sky the demon. flat earthers man where's the flat earthers you know make, make this fricked let me see <laughs> let me see flat earth transient luminous events oh you want to see like what what the, what these flurthers have yeah. to say there's no flat earth explanation on how like those are actually like the gods or something. I mean, it's a little I'm I'm it could be I'm not a the only one or something. Who I think must be a little disappointed by this, right? I mean, I looked for a long time, but like it's like you said the really catchy um 
headline of like we spotted an ogre in the sky and I'm like oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and it's it's just one of these mm-hmm. or like this never came up when you when you did that topic about uh atmospheric creatures not a yeah, I like not, not a single men- these... mention of transient luminous events no though I think it's because like like we said it's been understood for so long like there was no time for the unknown to sort of like seek in or seep into it because scientists knew what was happening like a hundred years ago i mean yeah i guess so maybe maybe so you know but i mean we knew that the earth was around thousands of years ago but that hasn't stopped anyone you know (laughs) you're right you know what i'm gonna say it this isn't plasma a plasma is not real your tv is running on ghost (laughs) energy that's our spirit shooting back into heaven or the ether. Yeah, if nobody's going to make the, the conspiracy, planes... I will. All right, check this out. There's a little man living inside your TV. He runs around in there like on a hamster wheel almost. Okay? And it shows you all these videos that Netflix... Netflix never stopped mailing you CDs, all right? All they did was stop telling you that they're going to fucking put this media into your TV. All right? The little man puts it on a little serpentine reel back there and he runs around on the treadmill and makes you watch things like cuties and um, big mouth. All right. That's what's, that's what's really going well, what on. What is in this blizzard? What does this have to do with the atmosphere? I told you I was going to make the good conspiracy. <laughs> okay, bring it back to the atmosphere. What's it, what's it got to do with these things in the sky? Well, that's that's I mean, that's where they get the plasma. For the TV. It's just like a real conspiracy, man. When that guy's made too much plasma on his little wheel, he shoots it out of his head into the sky. (laughs) Thus, the atmospheric... That's what your antenna does on your roof. Yeah. It's helping... That's what your chimney actually does. ...release the pressure. Yeah, it's helping release the pressure of the little... Now, if you want to stop them, here's how you can do it. If you work at a fast food restaurant, go into the freezer. Find the largest container of ice that you can. Now you're gonna want to <laughs> you're gonna want right to take it back fryer. to the deep fryer and throw it in. <laughs> yup. Saw that one coming. <laughs> I mean, it's the oldest trick in the book. What you're gonna want to do is put a spoon and a vice grip, and then you're gonna want to point a blowtorch at it until the spoon is glowing red hot. Then once it's glowing red hot, you're gonna want to take the spoon and run it under your cold tap water. All right, that's how we're gonna stop the Illuminati. I'm just spicing it up a little bit, you know. I mean, that's that's all I've got right here. We've we've <laughs> discharged all of the plasma and all the hot air from our mouths we could get. I'm gonna end it with this really sick one. How do you like this one right here? Whoa! Zoom in and tell me that the world's not ending. That looks like something off like the SCP wiki, bro. Come on. Like if you if you're looking out over the mountains and you see this very picturesque thunderstorm and then you see like the the interstellar like time gate open up above it, I'm freaking if, out. Yeah, if it's happening above the clouds, man wasn't meant to see it. I mean, this one is coming from Hawaii. Like t- five or six years ago, there was a super well observable like series of uh, transient luminous events in Hawaii. Oh yeah. And people just went crazy. Just because they knew there was like a huge storm system coming. Is that where a lot of these are from? Or is from like they, one super storm? Oh, uh, they can, they happen, you know, Pretty everywhere. Frequently. Just like lightning happens everywhere. I mean, like it, it just happens wherever the, wherever the price is right, wherever the recipe for the, like the these phenomenon nuts, it's works. It's one of the coolest natural phenomenons. This has been Mad Tower Radio, episode 44. Now, if you haven't picked up on it yet, we are still trying to ease into that bi-weekly schedule. But, like I said, two of the members of this podcast are trying to move across the country. So, we are making do with what we have. Moving on, if you would like to share your story with Mad Tower Radio and have it read on the show, you can find us at supermadtower at gmail.com. Mad Tower Radio on Instagram and Twitter. Feel free to leave a comment on this video 
or hit us up with any of your cryptid questions, topics you want to see, and uh, really anything. If you want to engage in the community, our inbox is always open. And with that, this has been Mad Tower Radio, episode 44, ending trend. A frequency beyond space and time. Unspeakable knowledge. It is Mad Tower Radio. phone call put him on put him on the phone you're live thanks for calling in just like (laughs) yeah yep no problem bye shit i am fucking coming into work today no no you gotta call that's right you call whoever's on call don't worry i'll give you his number i'll give you his number this is all staying in by the way (laughs) what was your name I want a first and last name so we so our listeners can know. You should have conducted an interview. <laughs> what do you think about the Mothman uh, Mothman situation plaguing our coasts? <laughs>